Welcome to Believe a Big Deal channel to you stupid human. Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, here I want to discuss, uh, here going on, uh, more stuff uh, regarding uh, retro computing as well as other kind of cool tech, uh, whether it's you know mods for you know handhelds, which I've done in the past, um, and uh, current pro projects I'm working on right now, like uh, for example, I'm looking at a uh, tape player, an old boombox I need to fix up. Um, God, let me try to show it to you here. It's pretty much in shambles. Um, yeah, so if you ever buy an old boombox, um, pretty much just just know that the uh, rubber bands inside of them have most likely melted away. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's not what I want to talk about today. Uh, today I want to talk about more uh, the hobbies I'm into currently, uh, as well as you know the things I've been working on, and uh, you know been working on, as well as you know things that I enjoy most of all at the moment. Um, some of it has pretty much spanned into outside of retro gaming. Um, a lot of it is still in retro gaming, but in a different, uh, a different place. So, you know, right now I've been to, into some retro computing, um, you know, even looking at some old software that isn't even games, like I was playing uh, Illustrator, um, one of my uh, old Macs here, which I'll show you here in a bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, and actually even uh, some retro PC stuff as well, like uh, you might notice uh, one game... Uh, called Black and White. It's kind of like a god strategic game. They don't really have a good way to play that on modern Windows 10 machines anymore. So I've actually hooked up my old Dell Tower that I had in college in, uh, 2000, uh, in 2006, um, you know, to play that game. Uh, I was able to get that all working and I even have one of the old uh, VGA CRT monitors over here just for that purpose and even have new purposes for it now which I'll get into uh, later in terms with my uh, Apple II machines. So I uh, just want to talk a little bit about uh, some of my finds I've had recently. Um, so I'm now in the possession of four Apple IIs, uh, for better or worse. <laughs> um, three of them I've had to work on, or no, two of them I've had to work on. Uh, one of one more of them I'll need to work on here in the future uh, and to remove a dead battery from it. I am in the possession of three Mac SEs. Um, example of one Mac SE is right here. So, um, I'm not sure if I should have lifted it up right now, but but yep. So this is uh, this is pretty much what got most of it started was picking up one of these Mac SEs. Not this one in particular, but um, the one. <laughs> The first one I got is actually set up in my office. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, and I've been working on these old Macintoshes. Uh, one, my other Mac SC, uh, the uh, tube is burnt out in it, but you know, that's uh, going to go under the file of new projects I'm going to work on in the future, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, maybe put a Raspberry Pi in there or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, and uh, also have very much uh, stayed with the times. Um, what my one of my favorite new gadgets um, is the PSVR. Um, there's better versions of virtual reality out there, way more expensive, I may add. Um, but the PSVR is uh, the easiest to, to jump into by far, and uh, is arguably uh, basically the cheapest solution out there. Uh, meaning, uh, they're more expensive solutions, but the games are far cheaper, but my argument for that would be uh, this game, for example, is a PSVR exclusive, which is probably like the best game on the system, or one of the best, Rush of Blood. Uh, another one being Batman Arkham VR, but, um, but yeah. So let's uh, show you some of the uh, machines I have here, and uh, what I've been in into recently. So, yep, thanks. Here we have two of the four Apple IIs I spoke of, the one on the left being the Apple II GS, the one on the right being the Apple IIe. The Apple II GS on the left features more advanced colors and sound, as well as other capabilities, you know, more RAM, so forth. Uh, the one on the right, Apple IIe, um, is actually the longest selling Apple II that has existed, um, probably the most popular one you'll find out there. Um, that is the most cost-effective one that you'll find. 
and it works right out of the box with most of the Apple II games you may find as well as uh, software, um, simply because it comes with 68K of RAM out of the box versus earlier Apple IIs you have to put in RAM carts uh, to be able to get up to 68K. Most games uh, need somewhere around 68K to run uh, in software. Uh, you know, the ones before you know, would be like 46K and, and so forth, and don't quote me on it, but uh, yeah. So that, that's basically the biggest enhancement with the Apple IIe versus earlier ones, and the Apple II GS has far more RAM than the Apple IIe um, by default and features you know better sound and video capabilities and actually the one on the right on the left the Apple II GS uh, you can run System 6 on which is a graphical user interface which was made famous by the Macintosh um, but the difference between the Apple II GS on the left and a Macintosh or at least the earlier earliest versions of the Macintosh being uh, the Mac the first Mac, the Mac 5, uh, the Mac 128K is the first one, the Mac 512 right after that, then the Mac Plus, then the Mac SC, and the Mac S30, um, even the classic Mac. Uh, they're all in black and white versus, versus the Apple II GS there is uh, using color graphics. Um, and it's actually kind of funny because the Apple II E and the ones before that, they could actually take uh, color graphics as well. It's just the Macintosh line at the beginning. Uh, featured black and white, um, but that's you know you, that's another story for another day. We can go get into that later. Here we have the Apple II Plus, which is the first revision after the original Apple II. Um, if you ever find you know, one that comes before the Apple II Plus, just a straight Apple II, make sure to pick that up because those are pretty solid after these days. The Apple II Plus though is technically the more advanced model because you know the plus stands for more RAM um, I believe that's it yeah just more RAM and uh, this one I found locally as well those other two that I showed the Apple IIe and the Apple II GS I also found locally um, yeah and uh, this one came with two disk drives and that Apple III monitor um, yeah it's funny the Apple III monitor works with all the Apple IIs um, the A Apple III monitor you know it used to work uh, come come with you know the Apple three, but the Apple three failed. Uh, that's a story for another day. But but it, nonetheless, uh, it's a nice screen screen monitor that works with the Apple two. Um, yeah, and yeah, this one as well as the Apple two E, I actually both fixed. Um, had to change out a capacitor in the power supply because both of them um, puffed uh, smoke out of the side of it because um, they just went to way too many uh, Wu Tang Clan concerts. And here we have the first Apple II that I received. Uh, this one, I actually had to resort to eBay. Um, there's actually an Apple II C being sold in my area now, but um, this is the first Apple II that you know started me off. So uh, the other three, I got lucky and you know, scored them locally. But when I first got into this hobby, um, I was pretty much convinced that there's no possible way I could find an Apple II locally. There's no po no possible way. Uh, just I figured anybody who possibly still had one pretty much would know right now that it's very much collectible, and uh, they would probably wouldn't part for it for anything less than like two to three hundred dollars. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I I just had to resort to eBay to to find it, and uh, I I chose. Um, this model in particular because this was the smaller uh, one of all the Apple II twos that I looked up um, you know because I originally uh, was wanting to place it on my shelf but actually now I have the uh, entertainment center in here um, and it fits nicely on there um, so if you ever want to find a Apple II and you're very conscious on uh, how much space you have um, I highly recommend the Apple IIc. Um, the Apple IIc is also the easiest to kind of get up and running. Um, and I'm saying that, I mean, uh, what make, made the Apple II famous um, versus its competitors and, um, you know, competitors as well as, you know, in the business world and add-on stuff was the fact the Apple II you could usually open up easily without needing any, you know, having to unscrew it at all or anything. 
Um, this one is fully encased. You can't open it up unless you actually get out a screwdriver. Um, and uh, you know, it just works right out of the box. And everything that you need in, that you need is already built in. So the original Apple II and most of the Apple IIs, um, I think in the 2GS probably already has it installed. I have to double check again. Um, just be able to be able to run a floppy drive. You you need a uh, disk control card for that. Um, or have to buy it separately. This actually has a five and a quarter inch floppy drive built right into the system. And there's even a revision to this model uh, called the Apple IIc Plus, which is highly sought after because it's rare. Um, and that not only has a five and a quarter inch floppy drive built in, but it has a three and a half uh, inch floppy drive built in. And that is probably more recognizable. Um, the uh, three and a half inch, I, I don't have one within arm's reach, but the five and a quarter are the ones that you see right there. Um, the big, uh, the, the black floppies um, and the other floppy disks uh, you're thinking of are like, you know, the save icons you would see in Microsoft Word. Uh, so yeah, that that would have been built into the Apple IIc Plus, but this is the Apple IIc. Um, and just has the five and a quarter inch, and that's, that's all I need really. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I very much love it. Uh, two of my Apple II, uh, Apple IIs, two of the four Apple IIs that I have, I've had to work on the power supplies. Um, and my two, Apple II GS, I'm going to have to actually uh, cut out the battery to make sure it doesn't leak all over the place. Um, but this one, uh, I haven't needed to work on at all, and hopefully I don't have to in the future. Um, there's one possible concern on this model. Uh, if the RAM chips go bad, that's not an easy fix. Um, those are soldered directly to the board versus um, the RAM chips in the Apple IIe. Um, I just bought eight new ones off uh, a website and uh, just popped them right in. They worked right. It worked great. Um, but these are soldered in, so I'd have to desolder them, which I know how to do. But yeah. Anyway, so what made the Apple IIc great was that it was a portable system. Well more portable than most machines. And uh, it was in competition with like the Commodore and stuff like that. And, yeah, so this, this is what came with it. Um, yeah, doesn't that look portable to you? Still need the monitor, that's the whole thing. Uh, but you can just you can just plug it straight into your TV if it has a composite connection though. Um, and I've seen some people hook it up to like a some sort of weird car battery and bring it out to the beach. If you ever look for a uh, new power supply on eBay, like those Toshiba laptop batteries. Uh, they're making new ones for those because the original one's pretty huge, it's back there. Um, uh, those are, aren't as reliable as newer ones you can get. Somebody brought it out to the beach as an example, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so that's the last Apple II I have, and now let me show you some of the Macs I have. And here we have the first retro computer I actually purchased. Um, you know, purchased it being retro from the start. Uh, the Mac SE, um, and this one featured two floppy ports um, and no hard drive originally, but thankfully the person I bought it off eBay again um, actually had a hard drive already installed. Uh, in, it was installed in the early 90s from what I was able to tell because it had one of those old-fashioned bays that could fit above a second floppy bay in there because I've already opened it up and cleaned it out because I had to fix the floppy, uh, both floppy bays, I had to fix them. Um, the top one's still a little finicky, but the bottom one works great. Um, but thankfully, yeah, I already had a hard drive installed and still still uh, working um, at, I believe, 40 megabytes is the um, size of that hard drive. And had some good software already, but, you know, I, I went out to, um, I believe it's like rescuemymac.com and uh, purchased uh, some some more software for it, you know, ones that I'm actually looking for. Uh, this one came with Tetris, which is cool, but, you know, I wanted to get Oregon Trail, and there's the Star Wars arcade, like, old vector game for the Mac, uh, System 6 software, um, that I, I really wanted on here, and, uh, yeah, and I was able to get it, and, you know, bought some new System 6 uh, so floppy disks, you know, just in case uh, this one ever, the hard drive in this one ever broke. Uh, what you see on the right there, that's just a little radio. Um, you can play AM and FM. Uh, I found that from a local uh, computer store. 
your, uh, yeah, they're just like, uh, yeah, if you want it, five bucks. I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a great system. Um, here, I'll can turn it on for you. Uh, it might look a little funny because it's CRT television, so it's not going to capture correctly. It's likely. You might see some lines. Let's see if this. Yeah. It's bothering me. I had to get both stands up. So, Microtech, apparently. I, I think that was the people who made that hard drive. Um, but yeah, thankfully it works. I still need to open this one up and cut out the uh, clock battery in there just so it doesn't leak out over the PCB. Um, but thankfully, you know, it has After Dark installed, you know, the Flying Toasters screensaver, if you might, might remember that. And yeah, and I have my other Mac SC, which I'll show you in here in a bit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm basically transferring all the files over to it. Uh, this Mac actually came, you know, since it has a hard drive, um, you know, I, you know, it's an old, it's an old system. It's in black and white. I wasn't expecting to find any, like, uh, you know, bad files in there. So, but, it, but it was pretty funny, the files I did find, um, one of them being, uh, or a lot of them being, uh, old law exams and, uh, you know, preparing for uh, law tests and you're know, trying to pass the bar and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff on like con law and evidence law and uh, real estate law. There's a lot of that stuff. There's tons of that to read. Um, somebody even in here, like maybe like her or his dad, like typed like their whole CD collection. Um, Cause I'm in the CD collection. I'm thinking it's like their dad that did it or something. Cause there's stuff about like the Almond brothers and stuff or Actually, it could have been his his or her CD collection because you know, it was the mid '90s when this was dated. Um, even has like some of their application letters. But anyway, I won't really show them. But, but yeah, here we have uh, their hard the hard drive. Gambrinus, they called it. Um, yeah, we have. Let me show you this version of Star Wars, just in case anybody's confused. But oh. All right, so I'm having a little bit of RAM issues here. Um, I, I've, I fiddled with that uh, stuff a lot earlier, so I might need to fix that back to normal. But yeah, so that's the uh, Macintosh SE. Uh, it's a fun little system, and if you ever want to buy an old Macintosh, the Macintosh SE is going to probably be the most affordable one out there for the stuff that you want to do. So you could probably get like a Mac Plus for like around the same price or cheaper. But the Macintosh SC has more RAM, so I would just say go ahead and go for that one. Um, it might be a little bit more uh, not stylish because it has these like gills on the front, but um, I like them all right. Um, but if anybody cares about uh, when this guy was in, in charge, or at least at the company, Steve Jobs was not at the company when the Mac SC came out. So if, if you care about that stuff at all. I just bought this book uh, the other day, so I thought it looked nice next to it. Anyway, oh, but fun fact, the original Macintosh uh, didn't have a hard drive or anything, just one floppy port, and that's it. <laughs> I don't even think you could plug in any more floppy ports or anything. That's why some people uh, said it was almost like just like a toy or something, because you couldn't really expand on it at all. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's the uh, Macintosh SE. And here we have the other Macintosh SE that I purchased. Um, this one had a hard drive originally when it was purchased back in 88, I suppose. Um, but the hard drive failed. Um, I tried to take it apart to uh, fix that old hard drive, but it uh, still requires, you know, special torque screws I didn't have at the moment. Um, but then, you know, I started thinking, well, maybe now I just want to go ahead and jump into uh, more of a solid state hard drive something more permanent, more permanent solution, and uh, make sure that all this old software is backed up, because it's not particularly easy, I'm finding out, to get old Mac software unless you have an old Mac. Um, I thought I could use the ADT Pro method that I use for my Apple IIs, which I'll, I'll get into at a future date, um, but, you know, uh, still, try, still trying to work with that, um, but I might have to resort to other methods which might require more money. Anyway, um, this one also came with the extra, extra floppy uh, drive that you see here on the left. Um, I suppose the person who owned this 
they didn't want to settle with just one floppy port, even though they had the hard drive. Um, so they purchased a second hard drive, uh, second floppy port. Um, but uh, it was, I believe it was owned by a school, because that's what I'm seeing, like, on the bottom of this. It should say something about, yeah, the university shop, uh, Faber Stadium. Um, I believe it's in New York, somewhere on Buffalo, something, which is kind of cool. And they carved the serial number into it, which is kind of funny. But, hey, floppy uh, drive still works, and that's what I needed to uh, use for a while until I opened this one up and uh, fixed the floppy uh, bay in there. So when I say I, I fixed these floppy ports and these old Macintoshes, basically I just I took the whole thing apart, but and um, got a can of compressed air and blew it out. You wouldn't believe how much hair, you know, lint, dust, what have you, gets in that thing since it's open. Um, it was pretty disgusting. I even took pictures a while back, um, if anybody cares to see it, but it was pretty awful. Uh, but anyway, uh, I was able to fix that up. So now that run, runs great. And um, so now I'll show you the uh, more permanent solution I have now, which is, um, you may or may not know, uh, what's controlling these is a SCSI connection. You know, SCSI meaning, you know, it's basically an acronym for something, I can't remember, but uh, SCSI, uh, -S you know, that stands for SCSI, essentially, and that's what this cable is. You know, usually you could find an ID cable in, like, some other PCs, but in, like, old Macintoshes, they use the SCSI connection. Um, so, thankfully, I bought a uh, SCSI to SD card connection. And uh, there's the power supply for it. And uh, <laughs> this was actually already open because I had an Ethernet uh, connection for it. But I uninstalled that because I don't have a use for it yet. Maybe in the future. Oh, that cable's on my charger here. Um, maybe in the future I'll put that on. I might be able to use it now, I'm thinking. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I just I put these cables out of here because to open this thing up, you need a very long Torx screw, and thankfully there's people on eBay now that sell them um, already very long, so you can, you know, you know, get one of these open pretty easily. Um, I just use the method of I had one of those interchangeable screwdrivers and attached a really long uh, 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 Torx screw bit, or was it a drill bit or Torx screw? I think it. Oh yeah, it was a Torx screw thing. Uh, just a really long bit driver. Um, and it goes all the way down there, and that's how you open it up, and then you kind of just use your might and maybe even a flathead a little bit to be able to open this up. There's other people on YouTube that have shown how to do this. Um, they're probably better at the whole uh, tutorial process than I am. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I was able to open that up, and uh, I just left these cables out of here so I wouldn't have to do that again for a while. Um, but I can still plug in an LED connector here. So then the red light in the front can uh, illuminate. Uh, this I bought from a particular website. It cost around 70 bucks. Um, uh, right there, that's how I formatted the drive. And I had to rename it to Seagate's something and a couple other values. So this old Macintosh would pick it up as an old hard drive and work. Because right out of the box, this, uh, this um, thing doesn't work with the old Macintoshes. You have to rename the vendor and the name of it and even partition it down to like i did 250 megs for it to work so it's it's actually a 16 gig card in there but it's only producing 250 megs in this right now and that's all i need for <laughs> this little amount of size these software is uh i haven't unplugged this yet to see what it looks like now in there i don't think it's going to show up correctly so it's definitely not a drag and drop thing from what i've heard so I haven't even attempted that yet, but I don't know. I might, I might plug it into my PC and just see what the files look like. Maybe it's something I can possibly work with, but most likely not. But yeah, anyway, so that is that. Um, I would power it on, but it looks a lot like the other one I just showed you. Um, but, you know, we'll look at it more in the future. And uh, these are more of the projects I'm talking about. And since I have this thing off a tripod, let me go ahead and show you my third Mac SE. Next to the, oh my god, there's aliens and predators and engineers from a movie that people don't like too much anyway so um, that's another one of my hobbies i'm collecting a lot of uh, alien and predator figures and stuff oh 2001 oh, terminator anyway so um here's the third mac se this one i got for around 
want to say I got it for like 30 or $40. Um, uh, they told me like, oh, well, uh, you know, we haven't even turned it on or anything. As soon as I got it, and, you know, because it was kind of a blurry picture. I was kind of just taking a shot in the dark just for fun. As soon as I got it, oh my god, it was like the CRT is definitely busted. You can see the uh, spots right there. I even turned it on just for the hell of it. And yeah, it's uh, kind of like if you smash the back of a television, that's what it looked like when you turn that thing on. But there's a hard drive in there and the indicator light was turning on. So I still need to open that thing up and see if the hard drive is salvageable in there. Because that would be fun. Um, but my plan for this Macintosh is actually, um, since you can actually rebuy these tubes for around $50 on eBay. But I mean, even then, like I haven't... I don't want to like try to test this PCB in there to see if it even works with a new, you know, tube or whatever. You know, just that sounds sounds like a lot of money wasted just to, you know, save one system here. Um, I'm not throwing it away or anything, but uh, the internals. But my plan for it is to actually turn it into some sort of uh, Raspberry Pi Mac. Um, so the guys in the Retro Mac Cast, uh, you can find them on iTunes and other places like that. Um, one of the guys on there, he actually made a Retro Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi Mac uh, for Tony Hawk. I kid you not, for Tony Hawk. Or it was Tony Hawk's wife. Um, and uh, yeah, they seem to really like it. And he, he makes it for more people. That was just the random occurrence that Tony Hawk wanted one. But anyway, so that's kind of what I want to do, do with this, is I'm going to take out that old screen um, I'll, I'll get a RetroPie, and uh, I'm actually hook, hooking up another RetroPie now as well that I need to continue working on. But um, yeah, I'll put in a Raspberry Pi in there and try to you know, have fun with it. And you can buy a modern day LCD that fits this dimension for around the same price as that tube would be, which is like $50. So, I mean, it wouldn't be cheap, but, you know, for like 30, 40 bucks for the Raspberry Pi, then like 50 bucks for the uh, screen. I mean, it's definitely going to be a labor of love, labor of love, but you know, uh, I think uh, once I get it all set and done, I mean, that might, might be a fun thing to have, you know, uh, pretty cool, you know, because then like if it has a Raspberry Pi in there, I could actually do like meaningful work on it, possibly even too. Um, if I really desperately wanted to, uh, it could be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that's a project for the future. And over here, I just wanted to show you I had a ton of old software that I was able to get off the net using a program called ADT Pro and just used a couple of cables and was able to connect it to um, my Apple II computers. Um, I was able, I was using the Apple IIc originally and now I'm using the Apple IIgs GS for it because it's a little, easy, a little easier to get off and running with it. Um, but yeah, just letting you know that you can copy your own software with the net using a couple of cables and a Windows XP machine, and off and, off and running you are. But yeah, and also just showing you here, here are some of the uh, old uh, RAM cards that you can plug into your Apple II machine. Uh, not the Apple II GS, that takes its own RAM cards, but you know, the Apple IIe, the Apple II Plus, and the original Apple II, they took these RAM cards, and some of them are pretty valuable. Like here's their Transwarp card. Uh, came with the Apple II Plus, and you control the RAM with these dip switches here, um, and you get up to 256 kilobytes, uh, versus the like 48K or whatever it was that came with the Apple II Plus, and then the original Apple II came with 16K. But anyway, so that's some of it, and um, here's some of the uh, software that came with the Apple II GS. I got Tetris here, some old VHS tapes, and uh, yeah. The Oregon Trail, that's actually for the IBM, but I found it locally. Uh, but yeah, a couple of my old iPods. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the opportunity in a nutshell. Thanks for watching, Gru. Now go watch the movie Blank Check, Gru. It's actually a good movie if you only watch the part where I buy a million dollar phone for like two zero zero thousand dollars. It made no sense, but he, Mr. McIntosh, bought it. So that makes it awesome and totally 90s. Just like the word totally. Please.
please subscribe to Believe a Big Deal's channel or else you will turn me off forever and turn one of my family members into some sort of raspberry pie thing. Steve Jobs, can you believe I'll get you for this and your whole humankind? Sincerely, Mr. Macintosh.